I use a Mac. I use an iPad. I'm in the Apple ecosystem. In the Apple, the Apple ecosystem. The Apple, Apple ecosystem. So you're in the Apple ecosystem. You got your iPhone, you got your Mac, you use iMessage. You're ingrained in the ecosystem. When you're considering starting your smart home, it makes sense to stay within the Apple ecosystem. Introducing Apple Home, formerly known as HomeKit. HomeKit is Apple's smart home platform that'll help you navigate all of your smart home devices in one place in one cohesive ecosystem. This is all possible on the Home app, which comes pre-installed with every single iPhone that ships. The Home app allows you to control all of your different devices from any different manufacturer all in one place. The best part is that you can access all of your devices from any single Apple device, whether that be your iPad, your iPhone, your Mac, or your Apple Watch. You can even control your devices via voice commands through Siri on these devices or through your smart speaker, which is super cool. Apple has shown their commitment in the iOS 16 update that they're very, very committed to the future of the smart home with their complete redesign of the home app, making it easier for the end consumer to navigate the whole thing. Let's go ahead and dive deeper into HomeKit. And before we do that, I want to take a chance to introduce myself. My name is Chris Orm, and I started my smart home journey three years ago when I didn't know what smart home platform to choose from. I didn't know what the best smart doorbell was, so I started this channel to help people navigate the smart home landscape. In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into Apple Home, formerly known as HomeKit, and I'll show you everything you need to know, the ins and outs of HomeKit, and that you can have your ideal smart home in the Apple ecosystem. For you to have an Apple smart home, you need to have a home hub. This home hub needs to stay at home, connected to your Wi-Fi network at all times, so that you can access all of your different devices when you're out of the house. My recommendation for you is just to just buy a HomePod mini, which serves as not only your voice smart speaker, but it'll also serve as your home hub. This is guaranteed to stay at home and I think really the best option for people starting their smart home. You can also use an old iPad if that works for you or an Apple TV. Those are your options at the time of this recording. Let's talk about Scenes. Scenes is a very powerful tool within Apple Home that allows you to tap one button to control many different aspects of your smart home. For instance, we can create a good night scene that allows me to turn off my lights, change the thermostat, and make sure all of my doors are locked with just one tap of a button. It's super awesome. Another scene that I use in my home is the movie time scene. When I push movie time, my TV turns on, my accent lighting turns just where I like it, and I can control my side lamps within my living room to create the desired environment, and that's really the power of scenes. You can control many different aspects of your smart home and control it by a pre-designated scene. Now let's talk about automations. Automations allow you to make things happen in your smart home without you even having to think about it. These things can happen when a trigger occurs. So when X trigger occurs, Y action will happen. So let me give you some examples of the five triggers that we have to choose from. The first trigger is people arrive. So when I arrive to my smart home and my GPS locates that I am now home, we can have lights turn on. The opposite can also occur. When I leave the home, we can have all the lights turn off. Super cool, super convenient. We can also have time of day automations, which means at sunrise, for instance, we can have all of the lights turn on and the blinds open and the thermostat go to 75 degrees, let's say. The fourth trigger occurs when one accessory is controlled that we can control another accessory. For instance, when I have my TV turn on, I have the TV accent light also turn on at that very same time. And the fifth and final automation is gonna be when a sensor detects something. For instance, you can have a door sensor. So when a door opens, we want the lights to turn on in that room. If we have a motion sensor and there's motion detected in that room, we can have the lights turn on as well. So automations are super powerful for allowing you to control your home without even having to think about it. Next, let's talk about HomeKit Secure Video. This is where you can record different clips from your security cameras that happen within your home. You have two different options that you can choose from. You have stream mode and you have stream and recording mode. When you have recording mode enabled, you can record different clips based on motion for your smart home and it'll last for two weeks so you can review it from any time a motion event had occurred. As well, you'll need to have an iCloud plan for this to happen. 
At the time of this recording, if you want one camera with HomeKit Secure Video, you'll need the 50 gigabyte plan. And if you want unlimited cameras, you'll have to have the 200 gigabyte plan. My favorite part of HomeKit Secure Video is the encryption process. All the video is encrypted end to end and uploaded to iCloud so that hackers will not be able to access it. And there's many different camera manufacturers that already participate in HomeKit Secure Video, including Eufy, Logitech, Eve, and more. HomeKit Secure Video really is the way to go. Finally, let's talk about privacy. Apple is truly committed to privacy of the end consumer. They don't wanna sell your data. HomeKit runs on a local framework so that all communication is done from device to device without having to upload it to the cloud. And all communication is encrypted, so that's super important. We wanna make sure, especially with these devices in our home, that everything is secure and that we don't have to have people looking at us through our cameras or anything like that. And Apple is truly committed to our privacy and making that a reality. To become HomeKit certified, you have to go through a rigorous curriculum made by Apple to make sure that all standards are being met, to make sure that the end user has the most protection and privacy possible through Apple and their certification program. That's a great reason to use HomeKit in itself. Overall, HomeKit is one of the top smart home platforms you can choose from, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem. Everything just runs seamlessly with all other Apple products, so it's just an extension for you to have different smart home devices that you're able to control from your Apple products. Not only is HomeKit secure, but it also gives you access to automations and scenes to make things even easier for you to control in your life and in your smart home. The security and HomeKit Secure Video allows you to have protection and control over your home even when you're not there. I love the convenience, I love the user layout, I love Apple's commitment to privacy and to making HomeKit a better experience for the end consumer. I think that HomeKit will only continue to grow and it really is my smart home platform of choice within my home. So I recommend it to you guys. I think it's so easy to use and Apple's never gonna sell your privacy like some other smart home manufacturers. So without further ado, we're gonna wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today. If you would love to subscribe to the channel, it would mean the world to me for more smart home content coming soon. If you want more from me, you can feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'm posting daily about life, smart homes, fitness, mindset, and more. So without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.